Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Molson Canadian, made from Canada, and Rocky Mountain Barbecue, Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. A number of years ago, Ron McLean from Hockey Night in Canada said to me, he said, Grant, if I didn't have my job, I want your job. And I kind of was shocked. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you have a half hour sports show, you do NHL hockey, you've got the best of all worlds, you're attached to the community. And I think of you right now, Pat, you do lacrosse, play by play on Sportsnet, you've got the, the fan, uh, Sportsnet Fan 960, as I call it still. Uh, half hour, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, in the afternoons, and of course you do the, the Flames hockey in overtime. You're doing it all. Yeah, it's been... Uh, so it's I want been, your job. It's been a busy last little while, yeah. Hey, although sometimes with the, uh, sometimes with the after show and the call-in show, you might not want my job because it can get a little painful sometimes. You know, interesting on that, because the overtime show on uh, Sports at 960 is where the fans call in after a game if they don't know. I was wondering, I was thinking this time, the, f the Flames have a strong client base, season ticket holder, sport sponsors, corporate. But you get the average guy talking. I wonder if they really represent the average fan or if the corporate ticket is the average flame fan. Do you ever think about that? Well, I think the main thing is there's a lot of season ticket holders who call, and the season ticket holders are pretty important. So I think that the Flames realize You do that, get a lot of them, do so you? So they, they, they do call a lot because a lot of people are coming back from the game, right? So they'll, they'll be calling after the game and saying, hey, you know, I was here, this is what I saw. So I think in that respect, because there is a good number of season ticket holders who call, that maybe there's some value in, in listening. But clearly corporate dollars speak louder than, than just the average fan dollars. I think we all know that at this point. Pat, what a difference a week makes. A week ago we were here, we we're saying, oh, the Flames are winning all their games. Sven Berchi is getting everybody's attention. Now it seems like all that good feeling went right down the tubes real quick after two losses against two bad teams. Well, yeah, you play the 14th and 15th place teams in the Western Conference and you get one of a possible four points. At this time of year, it's unacceptable. Sunday against Columbus, they weren't bad, but they didn't find a way to, to get the two points. And you've got to find a way. I don't care if it's a masterpiece. I don't care if it is a, a pretty way of winning the game. Get the two points. Win it in the shootout. Win it in overtime. They didn't get the two points. You lose to Edmonton on Friday. I know it's the second half of a back-to-back, -back, but every team goes through that, and you've got to find a way to fight through that. So, unacceptable at this time of year. You've got to find a way to get points, because those are the yeah. bonus points. You're not going to get the, the points against Colorado all the time and against Dallas and L.A. and Vancouver. You've got tough games still on the schedule, and, and you give up points to Edmonton and Columbus. That just can't happen. I'm going to bring up the F word. People don't like using the F word. That's fatigue. But uh, was the Edmonton game four, the fourth game in six nights or the Columbus game? They played a lot of hockey. I noticed in the game times, Greg Nemus against Columbus played like two and a half yeah. minutes. Desby Ann played two. At this time of year, you have to have three, four lines. You can't, you can't rely on those stars too much, even though the Flames have to. So don't you think the F word, fatigue, might be playing a part. I, I, you're, you're absolutely correct. I think there's two things. First of all, they're playing 31 games in the month of March, in, in or sorry, 17 games 17, in 31 huge. days, which is the, the most they've ever played in one month. So 17 games in 31 days in March, plus they're beat up. I mean, we're not talking about a team icing a full lineup. They just got Stempniak back on Sunday. He missed 21 games. Camilleri's out, no word when he's returning. Brody's out, no word when he's returning. And they continue. Jones is out. Backland is out. Chris Butler's Butler. out. I mean, they're, they're missing a lot of regulars on this team. And, and when you're in close games and you don't have the confidence in playing guys like Nemes mm -hmm. and, and guys lower down the depth chart more than three, four minutes or two, three minutes a period, I mean, that, that's a little bit worrying. And so I think fatigue and, and being tired and beat up is absolutely catching up with them a little bit. But they've got to find a way yeah. to if, fight through. They're still in striking distance, yeah. so they've got to find a way to use that as motivation. Okay, Theron Fury, remember he tried out for the Flames a couple of years back? Yeah. Bit of a gimmick, I get that. But remember the shootout, and he scored in a shootout, and everybody goes crazy. Everybody thought, hey, maybe this guy should make the team. And he joked with me after, and probably with a lot of guys, that, hey, maybe the Flames should hire me as a shootout expert. And I kind of got thinking, why don't teams have shootout experts? What's one of the Flames' weaknesses is shootouts, right? And if they were half decent in shootouts this year, 
they might be in seventh place. But so the, hire not Theron Fleury, but hire an expert in shootouts. But I guess last year they were the second best team in the NHL in the shootout. And, and they still missed the playoffs. And they still missed the playoffs, absolutely. This year it's it's been a little bit of an Achilles heel, but I really think a shootout is a, a coin flip. I mean, I think there are teams that are better at it. I mean, guys like UC Jokinen and Rick Nash, I mean, these guys are shootout specialists. So you have one or two of those guys in your team and it's going to be an advantage, but it's such a coin flip. I mean, depends how the goalie's feeling that day. I mean, you, you take a look at Mika Kiprasov, he's had so much problems with shootout and shootouts in the the past yet he's been really good out of the last couple of years you take a look at this year he's given his team mm -hmm. an opportunity every time in a shootout so I, I think a shootout really is uh, as close to a 50 50 proposition as you're going to get in, in in this game you're right Alex Tongue last year was unbelievable so good. this year he was he's, money in the bank he's terrible this year at it um, but if you're going to have a fighter on the team who plays two three four minutes then why not have a guy like Eric Christensen from Minnesota Wild who doesn't play a whole lot and scores. One more thing regarding the Flames, and that is goaltending. Um, nine games to go as we tape this. Shouldn't Mika Kiprasov play in every game? I know they can lose with him like they did against Columbus, and they can lose with Leland Irving, too. But I think Mika Kiprasov gives you your best shot at winning. Yeah. They have to go with Mika. Stay home on off days, but you have to play Mika every game. Even the back. They got one more back-to-back? -back? One more back-to-back, -back, the end of the month with Colorado, Vancouver. And I think you've got to go Kiprasov the rest of the way until you're out. And they, they may be out sometime before the end of the month. They may be out before the end of the season. So then maybe you go with Henrik Carlson and knowing that you're not going to make Henrik the playoffs. Carlson. See what you have because I think you know what you have in Leland Irving. Whereas maybe give Carlson that start at the end of the year, one of the last two or three games and say, okay, you know what? Leland Irving has probably surpassed you on the depth chart, but let's see what you've gotten in this start. Maybe try and win us over. But until the team is officially eliminated, I think you've got to go with Mika Kiprasov the rest of the way here. We'll take a break. We're going to talk about Sven Berge. Yes, he's gone. He's last week's news. But I think it was one of the biggest things that happened to this organization in a long, long time. Sven Berch is getting ready to play Kelowna Rockets in the first round of the playoffs for the Western Hockey League and the Portland Winterhawks. Uh, yes, he's last week's news, but I want to talk about him and what he meant to this organization because season ticket renewal is going on right about now. And I think it was the best sales pitch this team could ever come up with. And I'm trying to think back since 04 when the Flames went to the Stanley Cup final when there has been a this feel good feeling towards him don't you agree this kid this 19 year old kid did it yeah and i mean i think he's the the prospect that has drawn the most attention and excitement since dion Phaneuf was part of the organization but he never had a scenario where he came in as an emergency recall and was able to be hugely successful three goals in five games for sven berchi and he he ignited people he was a lot of fun to watch he and you know what he may have he may not have been a guy that completely drove things but when he had opportunities, he sniped them. I mean, you take a look at that goal he scored to tie the game, uh, the, the second game he played at home where he put it shelf against Phoenix. You're like, holy Right cow. in the slot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or or the, the, the final goal that he scored when he was able to pick off the pass and put it. So the goal he scores against San Jose, the goal he scores against Phoenix at home, both are just goal scorers' goals. And, man, you're like, this kid is going to be something. So I, I'm completely with you. As good a story as we've seen surrounding the Calgary Flames since 04. And his attitude, and his personality is good a lot of young kids are kind of well you know but he he smiles a lot I think it's it kind of helps put a face to this team down the road we're here in Calgary we see retreads year after year Tony Amani Todd Bertuzzi uh, Owen Nolan those kind of old farts that 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 are okay but there's no future this kind of gives us a feel the other thing is that the, the, you know on the weekend the Calgary Herald comes out with a prospect spread really good prospect spread Ron Sutter the player development uh, director, I thought he gave some good insight on the prospects. Maybe we're kind of getting a little too hyped up that the Flames prospects 
are that good. Uh, maybe they are, but we should maybe curtail our enthusiasm a little bit. Yeah, there's no question that Berchie's the top prospect. And TJ Brody has come in this season and shown us that he is a full-time NHL defender, maybe a little earlier than we thought he was going to be. So I think that's a really positive story, too. Michael Furland's having a great season in the Western Hockey League, and I think there's a lot of excitement there. I think that he'll play in the American Hockey League next season. I think under Troy Ward, there's a lot of good things that can be developed there. I think Max Reinhardt's a, a, a quality quality NHLer as well, but are, are we talking about, other than Berchi, anybody who's going to be that blue chip guy, anybody who's going to be that that really high point scorer or blue chip defender? No, probably not. But they've got some NHLers in the system, and they've changed their philosophy in drafting. Jay Feaster's at the helm now. They want to bring skill into the organization. So I think more players like Berchi and his, of his ilk might be in the organization in the coming few years here. At least it feels more promising than it did a few years ago. Absolutely. So who knows?